This whole business of IFD was founded on the fact that MCAT materials are way too expensive, and that is still true. They're priced in the thousands of dollars, and they just don't give the quality that they promise. That's why John and I have tried to add a lot of value to any materials that we actually ask money for, and we have options like our YouTube channel and our free program for people who don't have any money. I get it. But the truth is, if you can afford MCAT materials, there is a time to buy them, but you have to know when. My name is Maggie. I am a professional MCAT tutor and a third year medical student. I run this channel and this business with my brother, John, who's a fourth year med student. If you want to know anything else we do, check out the link in the description below. Go look at our YouTube channel. You'll get the vibe. But today in this video, I'm going to tell you when to pay for MCAT materials. There's probably about three-ish mistakes that students make when they like pay for MCAT materials. I see students paying way too much in the beginning thinking that it's going to increase their score and that's not your fault, right? These companies have these big promises that every student who makes this has gotten a 515 or a 520 and if you don't get that, you're gonna get your money back, right? I'd encourage you to read the fine print on all of those guarantees, but that's not the point of this video. Just buying a very expensive MCAT prep is not going to guarantee your MCAT score. Just paying for private tutoring, you know, I don't care how much money you spend on private tutoring, it's not going to guarantee your MCAT score. You guarantee your MCAT score. So don't think that the amount you pay is going to equal the amount that you, like what you score on the MCAT, because it's not necessarily like exactly trending together. Another mistake I see students make is really unfortunate and it's waiting until the very end of their MCAT prep and panic buying something. Thankfully, I don't see a lot of students doing this from the students that I've tutored, the people, obviously I've been around a lot of people who have taken the MCAT since I've been in med school and I chat with people every single day on our email. I don't see a ton of people like just making that mistake of panic buying something. What I see more of is people failing to adjust along the way when they come to a point where they probably need help. And what I mean by that is if you're scoring pretty well in all the science sections and you're still just doing consistently bad at cars, maybe you need some targeted cars help. So I'm going to cover all of those mistakes and the broad scope of this video is to say that probably the time, the two times you should be dropping money on MCAT prep is at the beginning of your MCAT prep, obviously, and at the end. So at the beginning, you're trying to get your setup, right? You're getting whatever kind of content, book, course, or like program you're going to have. This is where I think you could save some money and use free programs, use things like Khan Academy. Like your content should not be the expensive part of your prep. The things you should be spending money on are things like practice questions. So I would highly recommend something like UWorld. I know it's kind of expensive, but like I have dropped the money every single time on UWorld in med school, even though I'm so in debt because practice questions are so high yield for your score. The more practice questions you do, the more your score does trend up. Like that actually is in line with one another. And then some smaller purchases, like to me, the Anki app was really worth it. I think it was $25 a one-time fee and you can have the app on your phone. To me, like that was really worth it back then because I did Anki a lot and I wanted to be able to do it while I was standing in line for my coffee. I talked, to, I talked about this in my last video about like finding small pockets of time to do MCAT prep. It also helped like, it, I mean, I have the UWorld app on my phone and it's just so good. Like when I'm laying in bed at night and I can't sleep, I'll just do a few questions until I get, you know, bored enough to fall asleep. So those are the kinds of things you should be setting yourself up for in the very beginning of your prep. And that's going to be a little bit of a price time if you're going to be paying for like resources. This is also the point where if you are going to pay for content like IFD's content, you should go ahead and you should get that early, especially something like our high yield course, because you want as much time as possible with those topics because they are so high yield. You're going to want to be covering them a lot and making sure that they are you're matching them up with the questions that we have in our U world. And you're making sure that you're nailing those questions. And if you're not, you have enough time to go back over them, review them, retake them, that kind of stuff. And the end of your MCAT prep is also gonna be another pricey time. So this is the time when you're registering for your MCAT, right? You have to pay to take the MCAT. This is also when you should be pouring a lot of money into double AMC resources. I don't make it a habit on this channel of talking poorly about third-party resources because the more I get into this business, the more I 
realized like it's really hard to make good MCAT materials and to make materials that are representative of the what the AAMC wants. Like that's why this AI car studer I, that we're making I think is so incredible because we're going back and forth with our developer, not to belabor it, but we're going back and forth with our developer almost every single day saying, no, this is exactly what the AAMC would do. So replicate that. But regardless, this is not the time, like your final month of prep, I'm filming this in December. So if you're testing in January, don't be using the free resources right now. If it rhymes with with whack Justin, don't be using that for your cars right now. Just just pay like the 15 bucks or use the fee assistance program to get the double AMC cars Q packs. I promise they're so much better. I used whack Justin when I was taking them at my MCAT too, but I used it at the very beginning because they're not super representative of what the double AMC has. And that's the kind of materials that you need to be practicing in your final month. Also, I want your science sections to be exactly the same. So it's fine if you use something that rhymes with blueprint. That's fine if you use that in the beginning, but I just don't think I haven't seen that be super representative of the double AMC. So you want to take double AMC practice exams at the end. If you want a, something that reviews these practice exams so you can get the most out of them, check out our IFD double AMC strategies course. That's something you should be purchasing at the end of your prep, in my opinion. Now, the hardest part and probably where students like if you're watching this video, you're probably watching it for this, is adjusting along the way. So if you are a few months into your MCAT prep, you take your test in three months and you're like, that's enough time to increase a lot of my car score, but I haven't gone up on my car score very much thus far. Like, should I buy something? Should I buy a cars course? Should I panic or no? And the thing is, if you are struggling with a section and you historically have not seen yourself go up very much in that section and you're not planning on changing anything about the way you're doing your prep, it's probably not gonna go up in the last three months of your prep for no reason at all. So that's when you want to be as early as possible and purchase something, if, of course, if you have the resources, purchase something for that section specifically. So I'm saying cars because we have a, a, something for people that struggle with cars. But if you're struggling with CP, maybe buy, I don't know, the WMC CP Q packs, maybe buy something else. I don't know. I can't, I can't think of any, like maybe like a personal tutor or something like that. That's going to take you through some of that content gap that you're having st such trouble with, but don't wait until the very end until, and you see like, okay, well now I'm two weeks out from my MCAT and I still are not doing very good on cars. Like now I need to panic buy something thing because I need to, my score to go up by eight points in this one section that's not going to happen. So go ahead, adjust early. So to recap, if you have the resources to pay for something on the MCAT, to pay for resources, there's a time to do it. So in the beginning, get your U world. If you're going to pay for content, pay for it then. So you have as much time with it as possible. And this should be based on how you scored on your diagnostic exam, right? So if you're scoring a 505 and your goal is a 510, maybe you don't have to buy a content book. If you're scoring a 480 and your goal is a 510, maybe you should, you know, if you have the resources, maybe you should buy a little bit of the content. Yeah, obviously it didn't translate super well into it from your undergrad classes, which is fine. It didn't for me either. I was scoring in the 400s when I first started. And at the end, that's when you want to buy your double AMC materials. I would not use anything that's not super representative of the double AMC. And by that time, you should be knowing what's representative because you should have taken enough double AMC materials and enough of other materials to see those nuances. But I want you guys to do well on this on the actual MCAT. I don't want you to do well on some third party exam. Like, I mean, I do if it's gonna, you know, translate, but that's, you get what I'm saying. Now, the final part is adjust along the way if you need to. If you're scoring poorly on a section and you're historically not moving up, get a little bit of extra help, get the AI cars tutor, get, I don't care if it's IFD or what it is, but get that kind of stuff. Just try to get those kind of supplemental things as early as possible because you want a lot of time to kind of, if you're gonna focus on one section, you want a lot of time to kind of hone in on it. Okay, I think that's it. That's all I have for this section. I mean, sorry, that's all I have for this video. I'm used to doing the double, the double AMC FLE reviews. That's what I've been filming recently. But I hope that was helpful. 
If you watch this video and you're like, dang, I really want MCAT re resources, but I can't afford them. IFD sympathizes with you. We have our free program. We have, we try to give out so much on our YouTube, so much teaching every single time. Like we try to make these videos super useful for people. So go watch our, our YouTube. We have it, you know, things listed out in playlists too. But if you do have the money to purchase resources, just know when to. And know what I want to be the biggest takeaway from this video is that the amount you spend on your MCAT prep and your score is not tied together. Like they probably don't even relate like at all. I would love to see a study on that actually. But these score guarantees that these companies have on their websites, they're not, I mean, they're cherry picked students that did exactly what the company wanted them to do. That's why me and John don't offer a score guarantee. We have reviews if you want like reviews or anything. First off, we have a trust pilot. You want like, we have just all the reviews we've gotten in a document. So like there's something to be said for individual student reviews and what they scored, but don't look into just some broad umbrella score guarantee and think that that's real but okay i'll see you guys in the next one i hope you guys are having happy holidays i think this is gonna go up like after christmas but before new year's so good luck to my january testers i'll see you in the next video